So today I've got a demo in watercolor of the inside of a circus. A joke for you, a little bit of a hint on how to think about color and I even use some masking fluid. So there seems to be a bit of a circus theme going on today. So roll up, roll up, roll up. Come one and all to the amazing world of watercolor. Step inside and I'll show you how to love, live, and do watercolor. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I did a video showing you my palette. I asked you a question, which was to let me know what color can you not live without? And it seems as though quinacridone gold was pretty popular. So I'm actually going to use some quinacridone gold in this video. It may disappear, but I'm actually going to use some just for you. So this is the photo that I'm basing the painting on, the interior of a circus. Okay, so I'd better get into this painting. Oh, but I better get ready first. I better get into the mood. Ta-da! Now I'm ready to do a painting of the circus. So I paint the stripes using cadmium yellow and the bits around the stars. And then I paint a really light wash of cad yellow and alizarin crimson over the stars, making sure that I don't lose that very important light on that main star. Then I apply some masking fluid. I put it over the figures. I paint it over the yellow stripes. And this allows me to do nice, big, fresh, quick brush strokes later when I, when I paint the main area. And I don't have to worry about cutting around little finicky bits. So using raw sienna, very popular quinacridone gold, I put that on first and then while that's still wet, I come back into it with burnt sienna, burnt umber, a bit of raw umber, basically painting in the folds, but making sure that I don't lose that light and cover all that chronacridone gold or raw sienna. I'm really trying to create a tonal differences and a sense of a dark interior, but it's just the beginning. this part, I'm really trying to keep it fresh, so I'm just using quinacridone gold and raw sienna, a bit of burnt sienna as well, and I wipe it back a little bit with a damp brush to suggest some of the folds. This joke's from an old Danny Kaye movie, you're maybe too young to remember him, check him out. But anyway, here's the joke. It's a circus related joke. Accent, I think he does it with an accent. Marriage is like the three rings of a circus. First you have the engagement ring, then you have the wedding ring, and then you have the suffering. And get in? Got it. Good. Covered from that pathetic joke, back into the folds of the tarp with some burnt sienna burnt umber again. Ultramarine blue with burnt umber and a bit of raw sienna, I paint the grass. Now I peel off the masking fluid. This ghastly stuff looks like looks like something somebody sneezed in a in a horror film. He slimed me. That's great! You just have to be careful with this stuff. Be careful you don't overuse it. It has its advantages and disadvantages. It does always give you hard edges though. So now I come back in and I start deepening those beautiful rich red stars. This is where I'm going to get a real sense of light catching that star in the middle there. You can see how important that white bit was at the beginning that I saved. Whew. This is getting a bit hot with all this on. So I'm going to take all this off so I can get back into my painting. Some would say I've taken the costume off, but I'm still a clown. Maybe. Moving to a smaller brush. Now I'm pretty much filling in those white bits. I'm, I'm painting the figures. And I'm just making sure that when I do paint the figures, 
I still keep a little bit of light catching them, a little bit of rim lighting there. The figures that are silhouetted against the light from the outside, they're a little bit lighter. And you can see how simply I suggest these figures. Then I need to make the whole thing darker. So I come back in with some violet mixed with some burnt umber and I put a glaze over most of the interior of the tent. I paint the poles, one quick bold stroke, scrape out a little bit of the side of the pole with my knife, put a little highlight on with some gouache and pretty much I'm done. Sign it and that's it. Now you can see in the final painting that really what I was after is that sense of light, that contrast between the dark interior of the tent, some light coming through and the silhouettes of the guys up against the, the light. So it really became a tonal thing. And if you change it to black and white, there we go, you'll see that it works tonally. You still have a feeling of light. If you don't have a feeling of light when you convert your picture to black and white, there's a tonal problem. There's something happening there. If you look at the color palette on the side here of the painting, you'll see that most of the colors are in the warm family on this right hand side of the color wheel here. They're quite harmonious. They work together well because they're all in the same family. They're all these warm colors. In contrast to that, I have some cool color in there. Some greens and blues, little bits. It's that difference that makes them work. It's a good way to think about your color palette rather than just copying all the colors that are there. So if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, hit the thumbs up, give me a like, share it with your friends. I will see you in two weeks. Have a great two weeks. I was around with this bow tie before and I thought, yeah, that's a clown's bow tie. That looks quite funny. But I actually think it looks funnier like this. <laughs> what do you think? You like it? <laughs>